So we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, rather than sort of a, a formal lab dissection, I thought we'd take advantage of the fact that it is a, a, a nice uh, early fall day, a little bit cool out, and um, I've got a lovely arachnid that's been living under my woodshed for the whole summer. Here she is right here. Okay, it's a large orb weaving spider. I'm going to pull her down and uh, we'll have a look at her and see what we can learn about um, arachnid anatomy. This is uh, Arrhenius gemoides. This is a cat-faced spider. Um, in your labs, you're probably going to encounter something called a garden spider, something of a genus um, Argiope. Um, both are orb-weaving uh, spiders, which mean that they create those large, uh, round, sort of typical spider webs that you would expect to see, and they use those to catch their prey. So um, it's 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 not the same species, but it's a it's a pretty good uh, representation in its place. So spiders, of course, are in the phylum Arthropoda. They're animals with jointed appendages. They display uh, metamorism, which means uh, they're uh, is repeated body segments. And um, they have uh, body regions that have been fused into functional units uh, called tegmata. And in this case, um, spiders fall in the subphylum Chalicerata, and they have two tegmata. They have an abdomen, which is this really large part right here. Okay, and they have a cephalothorax, which is the little head at the front. Okay, and um, the cephalothorax, in addition to containing sensory organs, you should be able to see her eyes there, at least a couple of them. Um, it also contains the legs, of course. Now, um, chalicerates have no antennae. They do not have mandibles, um, and instead their first pair of appendages is modded to form a uh, chalicery. And we'll see if we can get a better look at those a little bit later. So um, spiders are chalicerates in the class Arachnida, so they're arachnids. Um, other arachnids would include things like uh, ticks and mites. So um, on the spider, her uh, chalicerae are equipped with fangs, and those are used, of course, to pump venom into their prey. I'm totally messing with you. Spiders don't bite. Now that we have that misconception out of the way, let's look at a few more things. I want you to notice here the bristliness of those amazing legs. So those are all sensory CT on there, or sensory hairs, and those are responsible for detecting her environment. Really important things, for example, like a, an, a tasty insect thrashing around in her web. And here, um, I've already pointed out the chalicery to you, but those little black things right on the end of the chalicery, those are the fangs themselves. That's actually a, a pretty nice view of them and you can see some of her her eyes right in the front her body is covered in a thin and quite flexible but still really tough exoskeleton the exoskeleton is made of a protein based material called chitin and chitin is the same stuff that makes up the exoskeletons of other arthropods like things like insects and crayfish so that offers her some protection. It allows her muscles to attach to it and gives her body shape the same way that a vertebrate skeleton um, performs all of those functions only inside the body. I've put her between a petri dish and a piece of paper so we can see her underside. First, I want to point out that we can tell it's a female just by looking at her pedipalps, which are up near her chalicery. In a male, they would be much larger and boxing glove shaped, and those are used in copulation. We can also see her spinnerets near the tip of the abdomen, and in fact, there's a little bit of silk sticking out of it still. And then closer to um, her legs, we can see her epigynum, which is her genital opening, as well as the openings to her book lungs. Well, that's all the time I have for today, so I hope you found this video informative, and I also hope that it helped dispel some of the fear we tend to have about spiders. See you next time.